Alrighty, hello everybody. Apologies if the audio isn't great. I'm still working things out. Also, I was sick recently, so if I start zoning out midway, um, sorry for that too. But what I want to do today is basically I want to upload the data to the um, GPU instead of simply hard coding it in the shader. By the end of this session, we will have the same as we have right now, the same triangle. Difference is instead of that data being hard coded in the shader, it will be uploaded. So let's go through this. First of all, I'm going to go to my config header and I'm going to define the format for my vertices. In order to do this, I'll need the SIMD header, that's in order to have vectors, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and construct the vertex struct. So there we have it, this is all the data we'll be using to describe a single vertex. I have an XY position and an RGB color. Okay. So now in the view folder, I'm going to add a few files. I'm basically going to make what I'll call a mesh factory. Now at the moment, the mesh factory doesn't really need any state because it's very simple. And so we'll just have a namespace instead of a class. But in future, if we want to make mesh constructors which have multiple steps might be a good idea to construct a class but anyway I'll just go ahead and add the source file as well so this will be incredibly simple Currently, we will have just one function in this namespace. That function will be called build triangle. It will return a pointer to a metal buffer. And it will also need to take in a pointer to a metal device. For reasons that you'll see in a second but basically the reason is that um, the metal buffer is going to exist on the GPU and in order to issue a command to create that we'll need a metal device okay so let's head over to the mesh factory source file and implement this I don't like these sort of hanging around errors, so what I'm going to do is sort of fake it a little bit. So I'll say just like that for now. It's a little dodgy, it doesn't matter, we'll fill this in in a second. So to make the triangle, I'm going to need to define the set of all vertices. So I'll use the vertex definition, the vertex struct that we declared. I have three of those. And now this next part is a little strange. But um, these outer braces are for constructing a vertex, and these inner braces are the fields of the vertex. So we have our positions. And our colors.
So let's go ahead and actually create that buffer for real. The way we do that is we call on the device, tell it to make a new buffer. We need the length of the buffer, number of bytes. I'm going to make that three vertices. And then for the options, I'm going to declare how the, um, the memory is stored. Now there's a few options. If we go metal, there we go, storage mode. There's a few of these. These first two are the really important ones. So shared means what you would imagine, that basically it's the one allocation of memory, both the CPU and GPU sort of have access to it, or it's somewhere in system memory just once. On the other hand, managed memory is where the CPU and GPU can have individual copies of the buffer, and we sort of modify the buffer and then explicitly signal that it was um, modified. But because I'm only uploading this once, I'm just going to go with shared memory. And now I'll go ahead and copy to it, upload to it. So we'll perform a mem copy. The contents function returns basically a pointer to, well, the beginning of the buffer, so we can fill it. Then we'll put in the vertices that we're copying over and the number of bytes. Now this is the point at which if I was using managed memory mode, I would then call in this buffer and call did modify range. And what that'll do is synchronize between the CPU copy and the GPU copy, but we don't need that. Okay, so actually that's it. Very simple. What I'll need to do now is I'll need to create a new shader. So I'll just go to my shaders folder, right click and say make a new file. We'll make that a metal file and I'm just going to call it general. Okay, so I'll just go ahead, grab all of this. Now I'm going to need a struct to declare the data format which is coming in on the GPU side, as well as I'm going to modify this struct to be the data format which is coming out of the uh, vertex shader side. So hopefully you can see how this is going to work. The vertex input struct will come into the vertex shader. The vertex output struct will come out of the vertex shader. I'm just going to need to fiddle around with this a little bit, get these names nice. And there's something else I'm going to need. I'm going to need to rename these functions. Because when we go ahead and compile things, it just so turns out that if we have functions which are named the same between different files, that counts as a name clash in the compiler. So yeah, that's just the nature of the beast. Here we're going to have the vertex ID as before, but in addition to that, I'm going to have a, a, an array of vertices. And this qualifier is indicating that this will be bound to vertex buffer zero. So you'll see later on when we bind the triangle buffer as buffer zero, that will be setting this up.
what can I say, not my proudest moment, vert, but it does work. There we go. I think that should be fine. So let me step through it again. In the vertex shader, of course, the vertex shader will know which vertex ID is being drawn, and it will also have available to it in vertex buffer zero, the set of all vertices to draw from. What we will do is basically fetch the appropriate vertex and then pass its position and color along to the fragment shader which will more or less fill in the screen. Okay, so with our shader done, we can close that down. And then in our renderer header, I'm gonna need a few more resources. So see here, I have my triangle pipeline. In addition to that, I'll make a uh, general pipeline. So remember, when you have a whole bunch of pointers, the star needs to go on each item. And I'm also going to need my triangle mesh. I can now go to my renderer source file and I'm going to need to include of course the mesh factory and oh probably should create this as well okay so I'm just gonna quickly fill this in because what I want to do is I want to generalize the um, shader loading function we're going to need to know of course the file name that we're loading and then because each of the functions needs to have unique names I'm going to take those in as parameters as well so let's go ahead and look at build meshes It really is as simple as that. Now I just remembered here in the uh, destructor for the renderer, I'm going to need to release a few more things, some of which I forgot about in the previous video. There we go. So we're freeing the vertex buffer and both of the render pipeline states. All right. So we're actually in pretty good shape. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make the, um, the shader function. It ain't pretty, but there we have it. Oh yeah, not triangle pipeline. Ooh. There we go. And not even that. Like I said, I'm still getting over whatever sickness I just had, but there we have it. So really the last thing I need to do before I can start testing this is simply to flesh this out. All I need to do is in here, wherever the hard-coded strings are, I'll replace them with the parameters. Let's 
So at this point, everything should be working. I'll give it a go. We've got what we had before, but of course, that's working with the old pipeline. So what we can do now, it's actually very simple. Instead of binding the um, triangle pipeline, we'll bind the general pipeline. And then we'll set the vertex buffer and we'll set that to our um, triangle mesh. And then for the offset, we'll have an offset of zero. For the index, we'll have an index of zero because remember we are working with um, buffer zero. So that's setting it from the beginning in buffer index zero. Um, so then we can just go ahead and draw starting at um, index zero, drawing three indices. And that's it. So it's very similar to what we had before. We can just give that a give that a run. Build succeeded. Okay, great. And just to check that this is working properly, we'll go ahead and capture a frame. But what's up? What's this up here? Update to recommended settings. No, I don't know. Maybe later. Okay. So to confirm that we are in fact binding a vertex buffer and not hard coding the data, we have this memory section here. We have, of course, the color buffer is bound, but then we also have this uh, buffers section. So we can show memory. I said, there we go, excellent. And up here we have this buffer, shared storage mode. All that is good. If we double click there, we can see that we have the positions and the colors. And something which is very interesting is you'll see that some padding was added. And this has to do with GPU alignments. GPUs prefer to deal with uh, multiples of four, if possible. But thankfully, we can see that it has, in fact, extracted the appropriate attributes from this buffer. So, I mean, really, that was it for me today. Just a quick one. There we go. And yeah, all the best. Have a good one. Rest up. That's for me. And I'll see you later. Bye.